Hey, you guys, welcome to the final episode of season one, The Long Ride with Wild Ponies. We are Doug and Talisha from the band Wild Ponies, and we're rounding out this first season with a really good friend of ours, Rod Pocott. We are. I can't think of anybody in the industry that we've spent more time in a van with, probably, than <laughs> Rod. Maybe even including our, some of our drummers. I mean, that's true. You know, that's we we true. spent a lot of time on the road with Rod Pocott, so it was fun to have him on the stage there at the Bowery Vault. Uh, listening to our questions and having to answer them, that was really fun. <laughs> it's true. And speaking of the Bowery Vault, we could not have accomplished this first season without the Bowery Vault in East Nashville, Tennessee, Ear Trumpet Labs microphones, the, what you were hearing the sound from the Bowery Vault coming through, Lurstrom 1917, the makers of a fine bullet journal, and the Russell Nashville. Yeah, it's been really great. We've really enjoyed season one, and we're, we're, we're glad you've been here with us. I hope you've enjoyed all the episodes. We've got something really kind of cool and special for ep- uh, season 1.5 is what we're going to call it. We're in the, in the pandemic right now, and we're figuring things out. We're excited about season two getting started, but for right now, we're going to uh, lob out some season 1.5 things into the stream. So be looking for those. They'll be on the way soon. Thanks so much to WSM for airing this every Thursday at noon to nine on WSM's Route 650 stream. That's been a lot of fun, too. We love our relationship with them. And we'll talk more about all that stuff down the road. But for now, I think let's just dive into the Bowery Vault and see what's going on with Mr. Rod Picott. Here we go. Okay. Lost a couple of high notes From the top of my voice From moaning too loud But I guess that was my choice I drink myself to sleep at night Can't tell myself I don't Crawling through the minefield The passing time Losing hope, heart is nails, thin as hope. I'm punchline of my own joke, and I'm broken as a bone. Going up in smoke, I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost. No one can hear me. Even when I shout And the louder I yell Well, the more I'm filled with doubt Hickory would break on My stupid pride Crowbar would bend Trying to get a, a look inside Hard as nails as whole. I'm the punchline of my own joke And I'm broken as a bone and Going up in smoke I'm a ghost I'm a ghost You would think I would give in Just a little bit Find some kind of redemption from my own sins But I'm alone and lonely Can't say I've done my best I could lie to myself but I know damn well what comes next If I had half a lick of sense I'd be counting stars The ones that were shining right there In your eyes Hard as nails Thin as hope I'm the punchline of my own joke And I'm broken as a bone Going up in smoke I'm a ghost I'm a ghost I'm a ghost I'm a ghost 
Thank you. Thank you. Very much. It's nice to be here. I appreciate being on the podcast. I'll see here. These are, uh, I'm doing mostly songs from the, uh, the new record, and um, they're mostly autobiographical. Uh, if you find a part that disturbs you, that's not autobiographical. <laughs> it's called bailing. Bailed out the cellar every damn spring There were buckets going out cause the water came in All night long my dad in a t-shirt He'd sleep for an hour and drive back to work Took every shift that he could get Sweat or rain either way or wet Sanded those walls on my very first day To my fingers bled but I had to get paid So I traded myself and the dream inside I had no faith, I had no pride Just a poor man's kid in a thrift store shirt So I did what I did just to hurt 95 was shining like a diamond hissing in the mercury lights a long black promise tail eyes fading bailing in the middle of the night leaving that place I rolled the windows down I check the rearview mirror and I listen for the sound Of the humming black top and the ghosts in the trees I heard a siren somewhere, hoped it wasn't for me Well, Nashville skyline, nobody knew me there I closed my eyes and I sang my prayer it went Route 95 shining like a diamond Hissing in the mercury lights A long black promise Tail eyes fading Bailing in the middle of the night Girl I loved and she had to go home Some people have a place where they belong But I guess I'm not cut from that cloth A pirate is home even when he's lost But you pay for the things that you give away And I'm still paying for that one today 95 was shining like a diamond hissing in the mercury lights a long black promise tail eyes fading bailing in the middle of the night Route 95 shining like a diamond hissing in the mercury lights a long black promise tail eyes fading bailing in the middle of the night in the middle of the night Thank you, thank you. Rod Packer. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Rod, we're gonna ask you to reach in the way back. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember your first paid gig in tips count? Wow, my first paid gig. Yeah, I had this horrible garage band when I was a ki- when I was a kid. 
And we were really, really terrible. I mean, it was it was it was tragic how bad we were. Was this the and rats? The this rats? was the magic rats. The magic yeah. Rats. And we got hired to play an elementary school dance, and we sort of prided ourselves. We were kind of punky little kids, and we sort of prided ourselves on only playing songs that we we loved. We wouldn't play anything that just for because people wanted to hear it. So we went and played this elementary school dance. So we're playing for like 10, you know, 12 year old kids and we're playing like the Jay Giles band and <laughs> so like Springsteen ballads and stuff, you know. It was, it was, it was a complete disaster. The lead singer screamed at the kids, you know, because <laughs> they were dancing like they, they you know, when you're a kid, you yeah. just dance to the, you just dance to the slow song. Just right? dance to right. the slow right? song. It's all yeah. you can do because you just walk around in a circle. So these kids were like, would be playing these rockers, you know, and, and the kids would be out there like slow dancing. They're just waiting. They're waiting for the moment to touch each other is what they were waiting for. How different is that from your most recent gig? <laughs> you know, I played it again just last year, and it went exactly the same. <laughs> The yeah. Jay Giles band stuff yeah. again, still yeah. really. That's great. <laughs> Seriously though, what was your most re your most recent gig? And what's been? Wow, uh, most recent gig. Oh, was the December songs oh, that's uh, right. shows that I did with with you guys down yeah. in. Uh, uh, I guess the last one was in Houston, so that was the last show. Last show I played. Yeah, you know, just on a little break right now, doing a whole bunch of writing. You uh, know, it feels good to be off the road because I I worked were really really probably too hard from the middle of. Uh, the end of the summer till the end of the year. You are one of the hardest working uh, musicians I know. And I wonder if, is there a venue that gets on your schedule that you, when it, when it appears on your schedule, you get kind of giddy about getting back to that venue, just kind of the favorite spot. There's a, well, there's this, yeah, there's this funny place called Byron's in Pom oh, yeah. Pomeroy, Iowa. And I, you guys, you guys yes. just played it. Yeah, so you can confirm this. It is the strangest place. I can't curse on this podcast, right? Yeah, sure. okay. curse. I can? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so we, my friend Stacy Huckabee was filming when, when I first went up there, and I had this gig. It was just one of many gigs on that leg of the tour, you know, and, and we, it's in Pomeroy, Iowa. There's nothing there. It's just nothing. like there's grain elevators and, and, and storage bins, and the town is boarded up. But there's this one little open bar called Byron's. With it. They got their little homemade sign out there. And, uh, you know, we turned the corner, and I looked down the, the, the square, and it was all boarded up. And I said, who the f*** is going to be at this gig? <laughs> I literally said that while she was filming. I didn't realize she was filming. And, uh, and we pulled up, pulled up into the snowbank, and, you know, I was all dejected and oh, got my guitar out and walked in. And the place just erupted. There were like, you know, 75, 80 people there. It's and, unreal. Uh, yeah, they were all just like, yay, he's here. You know, I was a little late. And, uh... It's the craziest place. You, have, you kind of have to go there to, to see it. It's its own universe. The, the entire room is crooked. Uh, the floor is crooked. Uh, the, you know, the, the stage is kind of, you just, you have to go, you have to go to Byron's in Pomeroy, Iowa to, to understand, the, to get the whole thing. It's yeah. true. And you have to go, you have to go into a show. Yeah, you can't yeah. just, you can't just drive up to Byron's and be like, oh, I get it. Oh, no, 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 you gotta no. go, you, you gotta to, go to a show. You have to also, experience. it's amazing, nobody at the show, is, there's like one person from Pomeroy. People drive three staff. or four hours, yeah. and the staff, people drive three yeah. or four hours from all over the Midwest just to come to these shows, and, they're, and, they're, and they pack out. And Byron himself is yeah. just this charming, charming, uh, gentle, funny, smart, old hippie, and uh, he's just a hoot, he's just great, and... Uh, yeah, it's just a great gig, you know. I always look forward to it. It's always it's always weird and it's always, always great. And just... It's worth the pilgrimage. Oh yeah, totally, absolutely. It's a it's a pilgrimage. That's the it perfect is. word for it. It's yeah. a pilgrimage. Absolutely. <laughs> now that you've been off the road for a week or two, I guess. How, yeah. how does your schedule change when you're home versus your your routine, your daily routine? I can't sleep and I drink more. <laughs> <laughs> when you're off the road. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So I, you know is. Uh, well, maybe I shouldn't talk about this, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's a thing, you know, I mean, I mean, musicians struggle with this, this thing. It's a, it's a thing with musicians. But on the road, of course, I'm driving. I don't drink at the show and I don't drink, you know, during the day and I don't drink while I'm at, while I'm at the show. I don't drink when I play. And so there's a small window. Mm -hmm. But when you when you're home, 
that window gets really big. Mm. It's a bay window. <laughs> it's a bay window. <laughs> and it opens at 9 o'clock in the morning. Right. And guess what? There's a server there all day long. Yeah. 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 So yeah. You are um, prolific, though. You write a lot when you're I home. do write a lot, yeah. Yeah, I, pu- I push myself very hard. But I, but I really like it. I mean, I, I come from, you know, my father was a welder. And I, he kind of lived his whole life with the attitude if, if you weren't ready to just sort of drop dead at the end of the day, you know, from exhaustion, then you didn't work hard yeah. enough. And I kind of just kind of that sort of, you know, uh, that sort of feeling is just in my blood. That sort of aesthetic of, of work is, is just in my blood. And this so, is the singer songwriter version of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it is. I'm a welder, yeah. yeah. I'm welding, yeah. Yeah. Weld us a few more. Weld us. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is a song called uh, Spartan Hotel. Mills are closed down because the weekend's in town. Everybody's going out tonight. Get your take home pay because we're going to play. Clear to the oncoming light. Tom's at the door looking pissed off and sore Like somebody owes him a life And he'll stamp your hand if you want to come in But if he could, he'd charge you twice He hasn't had decent music in years And these kids, they ain't got no class They helped on them squat, but coffee's never on all need is a pain in the ass Yeah, the losers and boozers and shoe shop workers the new lies they can't wait to tell They're dreaming and scheming and fighting tonight They're all down at the Spartan Hotel Their tank top and skirt won't need a good hurt Toughest heart here in this town She's got a list from her heart to her fist Of all the boys she has laid down Yeah, the whiskey is watered But nobody's bothered you drink enough You can't even tell They never complain They won't eat the same When they come home with the hard sell Yeah, the losers and boozers and shoe shop workers with new lies they can't wait to tell Dreaming and scheming and fighting tonight They're all down at the Spartan Hotel Couple of rooms upstairs if you dare Or somebody's laying out lines But you'll never sleep with the key to that room By the screaming blue neon sign Yeah, you don't need luck to get lucky around here If you can get lost, you can get found Just hold on to the rails of this dying mill town Listen and follow the sound Of the losers and boozers and shoe shop workers With new lies they can't wait to tell They're dreaming and scheming and fighting tonight They're all down at the Spartan Hotel They're all down at the Spartan Hotel Meet me down at the Spartan Hotel. Thank you. Thank you. Aw, oh, thanks, Rod. Oh, so great. So great. I, lo- I love the story you tell about the Spartan 
hotel about Slade's Slade's uh, the lead singer in that band at the time. Oh yeah, it's a, it's yeah, a, it's a, yeah. It's a good story. That's a good story. Yeah, you want me to tell? You it? can. You want to tell it? I'll tell it real quick. Well, the, <laughs> so the singer and my buddy Slade. My buddy Slade Cleves uh, also played at the Spartan Hotel, and, and the singer in his band was this kind of guy who sort of considered himself very a very authentic rock and roll guy. And at the end, I saw this happen a couple of times. At the end of the night, when everybody left and they closed the bar down and they were cleaning up, he'd walk down the bar and he'd finish off all the unfinished drinks that were sitting on the bar. That was the kind of bar it was. That's hardcore. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's, uh, it explains a lot, doesn't it? That's what I'm going to do later tonight at D's. <laughs> I'm going to go finish everybody's drinks. And I found out in England that that, that particular act is called mind sweeping. <laughs> which is, isn't that great? Of course they great. have a name for it. Of course yeah. they, they have a name for it. If you're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't wait to go mind sweeping as soon as the pandemic is over. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to D's. I'm going to go mind sweeping. I'm afraid. Have some beers. Mind sweeping may be what got us into this mess. Is that what caused mess. the coronavirus? Doug. That's a different kind of coronavirus. I don't, I don't know. Oh, uh, too early for that know. joke. Whew. It's not a joke. It's not yeah. a joke. Don't do that, people. You guys be careful. Be safe. Wash your hands. Stay away from each other. Drink your own drink. Drink your own drink from a distance. Yeah. Rod Picot, man. How about that guy? So great. He can write a song, can he? He really can. He's so uh, rich with his details, you know? Like, he can really paint a picture. And he can tell a story. It's, it's more of like a... It's rather than paint a picture, it's more of like a deep charcoal sketch. Yeah, it is. I it's feel. Kind of, yeah, it is. Yeah. And we'll hear a lot more about other kinds of writing that Rod does coming up in a little bit as well. But first, I want to talk about the Russell Nashville, a gorgeous hotel located right in the heart of East Nashville, one of our favorite places. It is beautiful, you guys. It it's an old church that has been converted into a 23-room boutique hotel using a lot of the colors, the stained glass, the old church pews. It's just stunning. You should definitely check it out and come stay there next time you're in Nashville. We're taking it over this summer for the 7th Annual Wild Ponies trail ride. And they're actually running a spring sale right now on any bookings through May 31st, 2020. So check them out, russellnashville.com. I also love their Rooms for Rooms program where they donate a large portion of their profits every night to folks who are experiencing homelessness in Nashville and the surrounding area. That's a really cool thing that they do. Yeah, the whole situation is just a win all the way around. It's time for the Long Ride Gear Guide. Yeah, this is the part of the podcast where we rate something that we use either in our touring life or in motorcycles or travel in general. And we give it a, a five horseshoe, one to five horseshoe rating. One yeah. to five horseshoe. One to five horseshoe. Or so, zero. Or horseshoes. zero. Nothing's ever gotten a zero. We've did, given some upside down horseshoes. Did Courage not give? Oh, it got uh, an yeah. upside they got, down They horseshoe. got negative horseshoes. That's right. Yeah. Today, what we're going to review, though, is my preamp, my Red Eye Instrument Preamplifier, made by Fire Eye Development Incorporated down in Austin, Texas. They're a really cool company, too. Austin has a lot of cool companies. This is a really good sounding preamp, and it's a, it's a direct box as well. You can run the direct your guitar direct to a PA system from that. And there are two dials on it, so you can turn up the treble, and you also have a boost built in right into the, into the pedal, so you can kick the boost in. Um, and it's a really transparent, clean, clear sounding boost. It doesn't really add anything to your sound at all. I love this pedal, and I have it at the very end of my acoustic signal chain, which is a very small signal chain, a little bit of EQing before that, then right into the red eye. I'm going to give this a four horseshoe rating. The only reason it doesn't have a five horseshoe is it doesn't have a, a, a ground lift switch. Supposedly it, do, it does detect and, and lift the ground if it needs to, but I do occasionally get get, get um, ground loop issues. Right. Occasionally. And so that's the only complaint about this pedal. Otherwise, it sounds amazing. It's so easy to use. It's very small. It looks cool as hell. And... and then, Doug cares a lot about the sound of his acoustic guitar. I do. I'm very picky about my acoustic guitar tone for sure. And I, I really, I really, really like having this thing at the end of my chain. It makes a big difference having it there. So there you go. Four horseshoes. Actually, I'm gonna give, I'll give them five for tonal quality and sound and four just for that one little thing of not having a ground lift switch built into the pedal. Good so call. check them out. Red Eye uh, Instrument Preamplifier. Fire-I.com. They're cool folks. It's a cool company. Let's drop back into the Bowery Vault with Rod Packot. Okay, here we go. So, I mean, you are, as I've said, one of the hardest working. You tour so much um, and you play so many shows per year. How, how would you describe your relationship with your fans? 
Well, it's, I mean, you can tell from the songs that, I, that I've already played that it's a very intimate relationship, you know. I mean, you know, it's, it's a complicated thing, the relationship between an artist or a musician and, and their audience. And it gets more complicated the more personal it is or the more, you know, sort of the, dig, the, the, the further you deep, the further you dig when you're, when you're writing, you know, it becomes more personal and it becomes, it's an interesting thing, you know, people feel like they know you um, and uh, they do know a part of you, you know, but it's a very distilled version of, 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 the, of yourself. And um, yeah, it's, very, it's very intimate, you know, like I have, I have a really small audience, but they're just incredibly loyal. I'm always just really, really fascinated and, and uh, grateful and, and, and surprised at how, how loyal they are and how they, they stick with me with each record. And, you know, whether I take a left turn or a right turn, they, they just will stay, they stay with you, you know, they'll, they'll give each piece a chance. And uh, it's wonderful. It's been wonderful. It, you know, my career went a very different path than I expected it to go. Well, yeah, that's true. Now you're putting out books. You're putting out poetry books, short story books. You've written novels and screenplays. I am, yeah. How, how has, has that changed your relationship with your fans at all? How have they pick, picked that up? It hasn't changed the relationship. I think it's deepened it. Um, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the, the people who know my work as a, as a songwriter, you know, there's very few, there's very few sort of zippity doo da songs in the set, obviously, from what you heard already. But... Um, and and the the stories Same with the short stories. and the stories that I'm <laughs> they're darker. The, the stories are even darker than the songs. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that is. You know, because the ink is black, and uh, <laughs> you know, and you don't have to stand there and and perform it. You know, so you can go even further in there, even darker. Is that is that <laughs> approach that you take to songwriting? Has that changed for you to how you approach writing a poem or a short story or a novel? Do you, do you start those things in a similar way or? No, they're different. Um, they, they, they call out to you in different ways and, and they're, they're real kind of specific, you know? I mean, I love the form of songwriting because it's, it's, it's so efficient and it's so economical and um, you know, there are all these rules, you know, rhyme scheme and meter and your syllables sort of have to match up. And there's a there's a beauty in solving that puzzle in, in, in songwriting. Uh, but in a way, those those same things, those things that are wonderful about songwriting are also handcuffs. Uh, and it's it's really wonderful to, to take the handcuffs off and just be able to, you know, sort of wander and, and uh, you know, like Andre Dubas the third says, you know, you want to let your imagination uncover the story. You don't want to tell the story. You don't want to make the story happen. You want to let your imagination let the story unfold and just take it down. You're just taking dictation ah. when, you're, right. when you're writing, you know, when you're writing fiction, when you're writing short, whether it's novel or, or short story, you're just sort of taking dictation. There's, no, there's not a puzzle to solve. And, uh, you know, it can be great in so many different ways you know, uh, kind of, in my opinion, unlike songwriting, where, you know, it has to, songwriting has to work in a certain kind of way. It has to be, it has to be truthful and the audience has to believe it. And also it's performed. So there's this whole other element to it, you know, and you have to put it in front of people and it has to be believable. And, and not that fiction doesn't have to be believable, but it's sort of why it's sort of wide open uh, how it can be good. You know, Cormac McCarthy is great. And he's got these doesn't use any uh, you know quotation marks and, and right. there's no there's all these run-on sentences and you know half half a page might be just setting or just mood. You know, he'll go on for three paragraphs just about the sky or the color of the sky, and and then he'll bring you back to the character. You know, you can't do that in a song. You can't do that in a song. <laughs> that is true. How about the yeah. work in the industries? You know, they're very different industries, but. Well, they're completely separate, yeah. but they operate, in, unfortunately, in very, <laughs> in very similar ways. Uh, yeah, there's kind of a hierarchy, and you know, there's a, a lot of climbing, and and uh, you know, there's a lot of inside stuff that you don't see till you're inside it. That, that's not very pretty, and and yeah. uh, but the relationship from writer to reader is the beautiful thing about it, and that can't be taken away. 
that can never be taken away. No matter how the business goes, you know, somebody comes up to you and says they were moved by something that you wrote, then they were moved by something that you wrote and you wrote it. Yeah. End of story. No matter what the cover looks like or how it was pushed or whether the book company, you know, the publisher got behind the book or not, you know, that interaction is remains beautiful and and, and authentic. So would you would you mind laying on us some of your non song writing? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. I All right. Like that. This is the first book of poetry called God and His Slippers, which is uh, you know the subtext of that title is obvious. It's called Bird of Prey. In the old photograph, he is young and hard. He's standing next to a howitzer. His job then was to fire the brutal, massive gun. There is baby fat on his shaven face and grease under his fingernails. He is surrounded by friends. They all fired the howitzers together. He has the devil in his eyes and a tattoo of an eagle's talons inked into his arm. In the new photograph, he is a bent reed straining and leaning on a rusty lawn chair. No friends are in the new photograph, just a skinny dog who never leaves his side. The devil has left his eyes now, replaced with the reflection of an endless blue sky. A bird of prey is perched, barely visible, in the tree line behind him. Ah, so there you go, there's a... Yeah. <laughs> this actually sounds, with this amount of people, this actually sounds exactly what a poetry reading sound sounds like. This is, this is, exactly, you got it. <laughs> well, we're, this is fun. This is, regardless of the darkness of your songs and stories. This was a bit it's dark, still, I know. It's a I bit know. dark. <laughs> it's raining like hell outside, and it's natural. Oh, yeah, it's it's, it's kind of fitting. Perfect. It's, it's fitting. fitting. It's yeah. kind of perfect. There's fog machines on the stage. <laughs> the scene is kind of perfect here in the Bowery Vault. It is perfect, yeah. All right, we're going to change things up a little bit. We're going to do the speed bump round. So what that means is we're going to ask you some questions. Oh, okay. Just, just like that. You just, just, I just answer. Just, just answer. Just, we're just, just we're answer. Like firing at you. Firing at you. Okay. So are you starting? Oh, yeah. Okay. I wasn't prepared for this. You're going to be fine. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Pen or pencil? A uh, pen. Yahtzee or boggle? Uh, Yahtzee. <laughs> Last year or next year? Oh, next year. You're really taking this seriously. <laughs> You're digging into these. Capote or Harper Lee? <sighs> Capote. <laughs> yes or no? Although Capote, my favorite book was Harper Lee's book, but Capote, I got to go with Capote <laughs> because, because no, I got to go with. There's more. There's more there. There's more to choose from, so I got to go with Capote. Sorry. Okay. All right. Yes or no? What, what, wait, what? Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> Billy Joel or Billy Ocean? <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Billy Joel. <laughs> Joel. Can you, can you do a cover of Caribbean Queen? Is that the... <laughs> Starbucks or Costa? <laughs> you guys are cruel. <laughs> uh, Costa. Uh, Portland East or Portland West? East. Drywall or sheetrock? Sheetrock. <laughs> Play us a couple more songs. <laughs> All right. Don't I win anything? No. I don't I didn't win anything. There's no prize after opening myself like that. That should be like a reality TV show where something's at stake that I get to win, you know? Uh, let's see. Pills make me rattle and the cocaine's worse Whiskey is a slow ride to the hearse But you don't get to decide Wouldn't mind sticking around for a while You don't get to pick the date or try Wish I could find a place to hide In the folds of your dress Cause right now I'm such a mess Did I set you free just like I did the rest I wish I was in the folds of your dress Careful what you wish for, dear Wishes come with souvenirs You don't get to throw one part away You keep the other part for another day Folds of your dress 
Right now I'm such a mess Did I set you free just like I did the rest I wish I was in the folds of your dress My own doing that I'm here alone Ain't nobody blowing up the telephone Just a fire in my head One side of an unmade bed And the folds of your dress so Right now I'm such a mess Did I set you free just like I did the rest Wish I was in the folds of your dress Um, this, is an old song. this is a really old song. This is on my first album that came out in, I think, 2000. And I wrote this song with a, this wonderful songwriter named Fred Eaglesmith that I learned an awful lot from. He was very generous with me. Midnight, baby, toss the night and turn and my heart's on fire. House is burning, it's a thousand degrees. How you getting to me? Stereo sirens, black top brakes That's not what's keeping me awake Darling, I can see How you getting to me? There's something out there on the wind I hear it calling out my name Throws your shadow across my window screen Getting to me, yeah, you getting to me, you getting to me, yeah, you getting to me. Down on the corner, the closing the bar, the handcuffed heartaches up against a car like you're up against me, baby in my dream. Blue lights flashing on the wall Don't know how I feel at all I'm throwing all of my sheets off But baby, I still can't breathe You're getting to me Yeah, you're getting to me You're getting to me Ah, you're getting to me Shot in the night, the neighbors fight I can't keep my mind off you And baby, that ain't right How you getting to me? Yeah That's a good one. 
It's Thanks. really hard for me not to sing harmony with you, Rod. You should have just done it. We know all the songs. Yeah, yeah, we can play and do all the songs for sure. So fun. Hey, what are you reading these days? What, what's uh, what's on your nightstand? I just started uh, Suchery by Cormac McCarthy. Yeah. And uh, just a little light, little what? light reading. Yeah. <laughs> I just finished um, a Russell Banks book. Uh, what's the title of it? Just jumped out of my head. A Russell Banks book. Yeah. Amazing, amazing writer. Oh, Trailer Park by Russell Myers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Will Kimbrough recommended that one to me. I, I, read, I read so much I forget that I've read books, you know. <laughs> I'll pull, pull it out just because the cover, you know, the, the spine looks good. And I'll start reading. I'll be like, I read this last year. <laughs> <laughs> I read this last year. Yeah. Is there anybody new and like coming up on the scene right now that has surprised you or that you're really into? A newbie. Brand new. Well, I love. Well, you know, I, new is relative. I mean, I was really that that John Moreland album in the throes from whatever that is, five or six years ago. It might be seven years ago now. I don't know. Um, that really moved me. I, I I really thought when I heard that, that was like a, you know, I, I saw him do a short set and and uh, and I had to go backstage after. It was so powerful. I had to go backstage and like get him to, to sign my CD, you know, like like people do with me. I was like, suddenly it was like flipped on its head. And uh, yeah, I loved that record. I mean, I think Tyler Childers is really good. I, I, I wanted to, you know, when there's a lot of hype about somebody, you kind of have that instinct to kind of go, ah, well, hold on a minute, you know, let me get this, let me give this a, let me give this a listen. I'm not sure about this, but I've been listening to some of his stuff and God, he's really good. He he's, is really good. And he's got an amazing voice. And I also love, I was thinking about this today, I love that Sturgill Simpson, you know, who has such a high profile and is doing so well, I love that Sturgill is taking Ch uh, Tyler with him, you know, and, bring, and bringing him up, because there's so little of that in the music business. There's very little of it, you know, it's a, I think it's a shame. There's very little, uh, people like to protect their little spot and they're afraid of other people kind of entering, you know, where they are in their career. And there's very little, very little help in, in reaching down and pulling somebody up so I, I was really happy to see Sturgill, who who's also incredibly talented, you know, reach down and pull Tyler onto his tour. I think it's great. Yeah. You know, we sort of feel, we, we mentioned that we went on tour with you in Europe several years ago, and we sort of feel like you did that very you did. thing you just described yeah. um, for us when we, we had never toured the UK and Europe before, and you and you brought us along, and that... Um, really allowed us to to skip a lot of shitty steps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I got lucky, and people did it for, did it did it from for me too. So um, I mean, it was but it, it worked perfectly, didn't it? I mean, that was it our did plan. For us. that was our yeah. plan. It yeah. was like, well, you open the show, and then you'll be my band, and it'll be a great band, and then you just come back next year or a year and a half later, and you'll have played in front of all these people, and they'll all come out to it see, you, and they did. Yeah. So before we have Rod send us out with a final song. Let's give a big thanks to the Bowery Vault. Yeah. Vero and Vero, Emily. Emily. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. You're listening to The Long Ride with Wild Ponies, and we're featuring our good buddy Rod Picot tonight, and uh, we're going we're gonna to beg him to do one more song for us. What do you think? Got Take one more us in out with a good one. All right. Thanks. <laughs> hey, this was really fun, you guys. Thank you very, very much. Hanging rock for 20 odd years now Six days a week and I can't keep up My shoulder burns like a grinding gearbox These young crews are too fast and tough I'm on my way down to the pawn shop A couple hundred is all I need If I have to, I'll hit the blood bank I'm bone dry but I can always bleed Schemers scheme around the edges Dreamers dream of better days But everyone knows what the catch is It's all about the take-home pay I got some moxie to keep me moving Slowly take some things away The only thing I was scared of losing She's already long gone away I guess she got tired of waiting For the man she thought I'd be In the end you can't really blame her 
we're all scratching for the do re mi. Schemers scheme around the edges. Dreamers dream of better days. But everyone knows what the catch is. It's all about the take home pay. There's a guy I know from high school Who set me up at the Super 8 Sales speed to the red-eyed truckers Coming in off the interstate I'll Take a job down at the Home Depot Half the pay but I'd still get by There's a new girl working the checkout I think I caught her giving me the eye Schemers scheme around the edges Dreamers dream of better days But everyone knows what the catch is It's all about the take-home pay Schemers scheme around the edges Dreamers dream of better days But everyone knows what the catch is It's all about the take-home yeah, it's all about the take-home pay Thanks everybody, thank you so much Our buddy Rod Picot. You can check him out at rodpicot.com. That's R O D P I C O T T dot C O M. Rodpicot.com. Buy his books, buy yeah. his records, listen to him, check him out. When, when Invite he's, him to your parties. When he's playing a show out there again, go see him. He's really honest about, about a lot of stuff, the, and, and uh, I appreciate that about Rod. He lets you know what he's, what's happening, and he's not afraid to be, to be straight with you about, about what's going on and what it's like being a writer and, and a performer. Yeah, I appreciate no punches that pulled. honesty. Yeah, yeah. And we're getting ready to jump in. Speaking of honesty, we're getting ready to head towards my favorite part of the podcast, which is the creative prompt. But first, we want to talk about Lurstrom 1917, these amazing notebooks, bullet journals, these gorgeous pieces of art that you can write in for yourself. Love them. Mm -hmm. I'm using mine possibly even more than ever I know, right? you are. during this quarantine. I, I mean, it's, it's by my side kind of all day long. Yeah, they're they're great journals. They have I love I love mine. My bullet journal it has two bookmarks in it, so I can have one bookmark where I where I use for my serious stuff like to do lists and out items for the house, and then another bookmark that I have for creative items for when I'm going to write a song or just things that I need to remember. They're, and the bullet journal system is really cool. It really works, and I love how this book is put together. And I also love their slogan: "Thinken mit der Hand," thinking with the hand in German, right? I love I love hearing you attempt do you love hearing German. Me attempt it's German. so great. Do you want to say it the right way? How well, it? it's let's it, hear it. Yeah, "Thinken mit der Hand." Thinken mit der Hand. Talisha is 800 and some days in a row on Duolingo German. It's, it's great. It's true. It's true. I'm yeah. almost fluent. That's very cool. Yeah. So thanks a lot to Lurston 1917 for being a sponsor for the entire first season of The Long Ride with Wild Ponies. We really appreciate you guys. Everybody, go check them out. Buy a book. So, such pretty colors. We currently have black ones, but one day... The full rainbow. I'm going to have the full rainbow. And now here we are at the creative prompt. What we want you to do is make something. Make anything. Make a piece of art. Write a poem. Make a recipe. Take a picture. I promise you, you're more creative than you think you are. And, and I know this time is, is weird, but it's a good time to go out and, and look inside yourself and find something. And we're going to give you a prompt. And if you'd like to post something on Facebook or social media or just send us a link to it, um, that'd be great. Tag PonyCast. Hashtag PonyCast is the hashtag for the creative prompt. P-O-N-Y-C-A-S-T. So here's the prompt. Here's what we want you to take mm. out into the world and make something with Take Home Pay. Take Home Pay. The last song that Rod Picot played there called Take Home Pay. Take Home Pay. Yeah. Means that's a lot of that's things. taken on a, a, some new meanings here recently for quite a few of us. Thank you guys so much for listening. We really appreciate you being a part of it. If you like what you're listening to and you want to hear more songs and more stories, there's even some stuff that we couldn't leave in this version um, that you can hear. If you want to go to the Patreon version, 
patreon.com slash wild ponies and you can hear the full extended recording we did with rod picot at the bowery vault and we've also got some cover songs we recorded of our friends and some other cool features over there so check that out not only that but our patrons got an exclusive patron only option to tune in to the recording of season 1.5 episode one i know that was pretty special yeah so thanks a lot to you for listening. Thanks a lot to WSN's Route 650 for airing this on their airwaves. Thanks to Lursham 1917. Thanks to the Russell Nashville. We'll see you guys soon, I hope. Take care. Thanks to you. Bye.